To be the man, you gotta beat the man. This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes. Where is he? Cut this shot. Your arms are just too short to box with God. Welcome to the Future Heels Podcast. My name is Jacob Bessler. I'm hotter. This is Brian, Bryman Peacock. Yeah, usually I introduce you, I caught you off guard this time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I was like, wait, oh, what was my name again? Oh. <laughs> That's okay, you usually forget the name of the podcast. So, <laughs> where are we? Mm. Why are we here? No one knows. We're doing the thing. We're doing the thing. Hopefully people are listening. So, we're now a week removed, exactly a week removed from WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, Raw and SmackDown have happened, and we're going to talk about it. I think it's been a really good eight days of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, We're just going to go through, talk about Raw, talk about SmackDown, talk about a bunch of other stuff that happened since then. Um, Let's see, we got Raw, night after WrestleMania. So Roman Reigns comes out, and the crowd is just booing their minds off like they're going to riot because this (laughs) fucker has showed up how dare he show up and he stands there for god it must have been forever looking like he's gonna talk he doesn't talk looking like he's gonna talk he doesn't talk this goes on for a little bit and he goes to talk and the crowd got a bit quiet and you can hear this in our new intro by the way and all he says, this is my yard now. Yeah. And he leaves. Wow. Yeah. I, uh... I'll say what everyone else is saying. Best range promo ever. <laughs> Short to the point. Yeah. And this is what I wanted him to do. I wanted him to just take the Undertaker gimmick, the, the my yard thing, and run with it. It's his now. Yeah. I mean... They said just the other week that they weren't going to turn him heel. But now they are? Well... It's not like they came out and said that like on the TV on show. On TV, itself. right? Yeah. People, Your normal people don't know? Yeah. Not, We're not normal people. No, apparently not. We're insiders. No. Inside of nothing. Yeah. Nope, that would be virgins. We're not virgins. <laughs> we're, not, we're not virgins Assholes Did someone leave a comment? <laughs> no No one's left any comments We had Matt Hardy And Jeff Hardy That's still weird to say We had the Hardys defeat Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson Yeah this It's cool to say that Yeah Apparently the crowd chanted, fuck that owl. I didn't notice that on the TV show. Uh, yeah, they may have done something to censor that. Yeah, that's, probably. That's, that's funny. pretty funny. That was a good match, though. I really thought the club were going to beat them. It looked like it a couple times. Yeah. Um, Dang, we don't know if they've signed a deal. or The Hardys? Yeah. Yeah, I think I have. Uh, I mean, I think they have, but there hasn't been official, at least from what I've seen, an official... Hardy signed with the WWE. I think in order for them to be on the main roster, they would have had to be signed. Probably. I don't think Vince, Triple H, anyone would have put them on TV without them being signed. I mean, probably not. I but. do think... I think they still have a couple indie bookings. I could be wrong, though. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure. I thought I read that. I could be wrong. I could be making that shit up. <laughs> Uh, well, when we actually watched this Raw, yeah, we actually came over and watched it. We had to do that more often. Yeah, maybe because that one got again three hours. Yeah, Jesus, oh, an yeah, hour this is out. The one we, yeah, it was long. It was very long, and there were a lot of uh, a lot of European commercials for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> Let's never mention that again. Nope. <laughs> uh, so then we had Mr. McMahon come down to the ring and announce that, and we're, we're going to talk about this in more detail in a little bit, we're going to have a superstar shakeup next week. Which yeah. is just a draft. I don't know why they didn't just call it the draft. 
Because they wanted to call it something dumb. Stupid Star Shake Up! That was a Vince McMahon thing. That has to be a Vince McMahon thing. That's yeah. such a dumb name. Sounds like something from the 80s. It's a dumb name, but I'm excited about it. Yeah. I don't... I mean, how long ha- has it been since the, you know, they've had the split rosters? Maybe a year. I mean, if they're going to do it every happened, year. I think it happened right after WrestleMania. Which would make sense. I don't know. I, I'd have to look it up. Um, and then Vince announced that, you know, with Foley being gone, Stephanie is injured. We have to get a new GM. So who shows up? Teddy Long! Yes. <laughs> so good. And he was dancing, and we were dancing. Vince McMahon was yelling at us. <laughs> yeah. And I was sorry, Jess was yelling at us. <laughs> Vince McMahon was yelling at Teddy Long, and Jess was yelling at us. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Um, and then the real GM's music hit. That's fucking terrible. We need a way to insert music. No, we don't. <laughs> the way we insert music is by me. Alright. Uh, you suck. You, you suck. suck. You suck. suck. I've never seen anyone so happy to be told. I know. Suck. Him He's and like, Cena. Yes, yes, I do. I do so much. Yeah. But he was so happy. It's too bad Roman Reigns doesn't have like some kind of sing along music. You. You suck. You. You suck. Yeah, it would have to be something like that. <laughs> Crowd would just get totally thrown off. Yeah, Kurt Angle is the GM now. That's awesome. Yeah. The more Angle on TV, the better. I hope this leads to uh, some kind of feud. In a perfect world, a feud with Daniel Bryan, where they end up in the ring, but that won't happen. But I hope Angle ends up back in the ring at some point. Yeah, because... really do. I mean, he's been wrestling up to this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason he couldn't, that I know of. I would love <laughs> to see it. I'm yeah. a big critical fan. And I think uh, Daniel Bryan and Kurt Angle, I mean, I think they have the experience to that they could do a match together to where neither one of them has any risk of injury right but the doctors injured. would never let Daniel Bryan do that yeah um, yes I get what you're saying yeah. you're absolutely right they'd probably take no bumps yeah and have an amazing match yeah exactly but it won't happen uh then we had the uh the new day good lord <laughs> We had the New Day uh, say that they're going to take on anyone from the back. Who came out? Say yeah! The Revival. That was that was pretty good. God, that makes me happy. I, I told the both of them, not that it matters coming from me, but when we met them in NXT, I told them, well, you guys are going to be big. Yeah. I know it. And they are. I mean, I'm not their biggest fan or anything. but I might they're... be. <laughs> Love the Revival. I mean, they're good. No flips, just fists. I hear that's catchy. Which is incredible because, um, was it Xavier Woods? Yes, Xavier did like a flip into the Shatter Machine, uh, which was awesome. That's right. And then Kurt Angle and Enzo and Cass had the best backstage interaction ever. Yes, that was. <laughs> Enzo and Cass, they won a shot at the tag titles. And uh, why did they tell him? I don't remember why. Oh. They did their whole S A W F T joke, and as they walked away, Kurt Angle's just. That's not how you spell soft. <laughs> it's like Kurt is is so far removed from this world. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. It's, it's literally like Kurt's been in hibernation for years. <laughs> and that's always kind of been his. Like he's always kind of been. Oh, goofy? Yeah, and oh, like, yeah. clueless and just doesn't quite get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love that he can do that. He's like the most one of the most incredible in-ring workers, and yet he's just the goofiest motherfucker. Yeah. As proven by his Hall of Fame with him drinking the milk and wearing the little cowboy hat. and Absolutely incredible. I did love the milk. That was good. It was a good touch. Now, this next thing I have a problem with, and I love it. It was Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Dana Brooke 
versus Nia Jax, Charlotte, and Emma. So glad Emma's back. I was a little confused. About what? Dana Brooke. Yes, okay, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, like, oh, she's just she's just face. Okay. Alright. We need another woman to be a face. Just you. Go. Yeah. Hopefully no one will remember that you're a heel. <laughs> right. And Dana's an incredible heel. I would rather Nia Jax be a face than uh than Dana Brooke. She, she it makes be, just as little sense. Yeah, I mean that's true. I mean if we're going on the same dumb fucking logic. Yeah, just just let's just do this because we need to. Yeah. I guess. And badass Emma is an awesome heel. Yeah. It's all about Emma. Love it. I got I hope they give her a good run. She is pretty good. The Emmalina thing was stupid. Yeah. I don't and know. I'm glad they put the kibosh on that. I don't know. I just don't. It was it. super confusing. Yeah. We talked about it. We watched it on one of the podcasts. Oh, uh, that's Yeah, and just weird. This is weird. <laughs> I hope I hope there's a payoff to it. Probably won't be, but no, I'm sure I'm sure there's not. So then there's a bunch of other crap happened. Lesnar and Heyman came out. This is... I don't know about this. Heyman was saying that, you know, obviously we want to see Seth Rollins or one of the Hardys against Brock. And then Braun came out. Yeah. And Braun said no, it's going to be on my time or something. Yeah, it didn't really make a lot of sense. And Heyman implied that it's going to be Roman Reigns and Brock. Yeah. Again, I'm going to be rooting for Brock. Yeah. So, I don't know, I couldn't care less about that. I would like to see, you know, Matt Hardy versus Brock Lesnar. I think that would be great. Yeah, I don't, but I don't see them splitting up the Hardys right now. No, absolutely not. No. And Seth Rollins versus Brock. I don't know, I just don't see Seth Rollins going over with that. Yeah. I mean, he did beat them. He beat. Did? Yeah. It's it Seth, right? Yeah. Yeah, Seth beat Brock and Roman. Oh, it was a. Uh, he cashed in Money in the Bank, but. Yeah, okay, yeah. I was going to say, I don't remember yeah. that. I do remember the Money in the Bank, though. Yeah. I mean, he technically beat them both. I mean, yeah. If, if that's the way you're going to look at it. Yeah, if that's the way you're going to look at it. I mean, I guess Seth did beat them using the Money in the Bank, but. One on ones. I don't think Seth could beat Brock. Realistically. I think that would put him over big time. It would. I mean, he beat Triple H. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe. I, I never want to count anyone out in any match. Because, you know. Yeah. It It's pro wrestling. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you can't really count anybody out. But, it's less believable for Seth I mean, to go over. It goes back to what I was saying about Brock beating The Undertaker. It makes sense. Yeah. Brock is a monster. Brock is an MMA fighter. Right. It's like, oh, well, that's what it took to beat The Undertaker. Right. Like, that's a super high bar. Yeah, I mean, he has a lot of accolades outside of yeah. wrestling, so. Absolutely. So, yeah, I would like to see, I guess I would like to see Roman and Brock. I guess. As long as Brock wins. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind. I, I don't know. I kind of don't want to see Roman with the belt, even though I don't hate him as much as everyone else does. I don't either. I just... Well, we're going to talk more about him later. Okay. So Enzo and Cass, they get their first... Or their number one contenders match versus Sheamus and Cesaro. Right. Sheamus and Cesaro won. Cesaro. Shazaro, damn straight. I guess they're tweeting them, that at them more. Yes. I love that name. It was Shazaro! A complete accident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I do like that. I love their entrance. Their entrance is great. Yeah. Was it, what do they call them? The Bond Brothers or Bond Bros? Something like that. Like they do the James Bond thing, and then they have kilts. Yeah, they, yeah, they have suits, and then they have kilts. Which is pretty cool. So earlier in the day, uh, who was supposed to? Oh, Seth. It was supposed to be Seth Rollins and Jericho 
versus Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Right. And Joe and Kevin Owens jumped and beat the shit out of Jericho. Like, legit beat the hell out of him. And right before this happened, I called it. Like, right before they jumped yeah. on I was like, ah, oh, I see what's going on here. Absolutely. So, Finn Balor came back. Finally. Balor Club. We didn't get the team in. No. But that's okay. They need to save it. Yeah, that's like pay-per-view only. We got human Finn Balor. Yeah, which is okay. Still was good. Still awesome. Yeah. And the match with Seth Rollins and Finn Balor defeating Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe was great. Yeah. A really great match. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And that I, was the end of Raw. Uh, let's see. Rollins knocks Joe down with a flying knee. The Owens super kicks Rollins. Balor drops Owens. A flying double foot stomp off the top rope. The really, SE Scoops? Yeah. That's the coup de gras. We don't know what a flying double foot stomp is. <laughs> the goddamn coup de gras. So, yeah, that was Raw. Which, I do wish he would use Bloody Sunday. He has. I know he's used it, but I wish he would use it more. Because the coup de gras, I mean, it's definitely effective. Yeah. But it's, I don't know, I don't think it's showy enough for him. It's kind of just... I don't know, I showed it to uh, my brother, yeah. who used to be into wrestling, and he's just like, how is he doing that? How oh, is he yeah. not killing that person? Yeah, I, I remember the first time I saw it, Loki used it. Oh yeah, that's right. And I saw it in a Ring of Honor video, and I was I lost it. I mean, I, but I don't know. I think it looks, and I'm sure, it is extremely painful. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But I don't know. Like with Bloody Sunday, it's just more, more flashy. Yeah. And I think Balor should have more flashy, uh, more flashy move setups. I don't know. It's not terrible. So, and after Raw, they had Raw Talk. And we come to find out that the Hardys are no longer broken. Okay, yeah, we didn't watch that together. Right. I, I, I have, actually haven't watched it. I just saw the report. Okay. Um, now, Reedy, Matt's wife, she tweeted out something I thought was really interesting. I can't remember what it's called, but apparently there's this art form where you take something broken and you mend it with gold. Yeah, it's a Chinese thing. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So, because Matt Hardy has won the TNA titles, the uh, CMLL, or was it AAA, or was it both? Uh, I think it was CMLL. And then it was ROH, and you know now WWE, now he's not insane anymore. Uh. But, I think they also said all things can still be broken. So we might get Matt Hardy, broken Matt Hardy eventually. Yeah, maybe they'll do a run up to it, so it's not... Out of nowhere, Matt Hardy has lost his shit. Yeah. Also, TNA is going after the Hardys right now for the broken gimmick. Oh. I think WWE is probably like, nope, don't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Yep. yep. Or at least maybe right now they're in negotiations to help the Hardys. Who the hell knows? Right. But it doesn't matter because we got the Hardys. Yeah. So happy about that. I'm, and it looks like they're going to be like the original Hardys. And no, they're going to be better than the original Hardys. Because, like, when they left, Matt was version 2, and he was doing great promos. Jeff was doing good promos. Now they're both doing amazing promos. Right. So, yeah, I, we just, we've got much better versions of them now. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens with them. Yeah, of course. And then we had SmackDown. Now, I want to get your thoughts on something. Like, Smack, Raw happens, SmackDown happens... Yeah, Not until we, Monday. Then we have like a whole week. But then we have NXT the next day. Yeah, which... I, I liked watch. it when it was Raw on Monday and SmackDown on Thursday or Friday. Yeah, it, it was more spaced out. I think they do it because of production. It makes sense. Do they film Raw and SmackDown in the same place every time? They did Monday. I know they did this Not time. normally, though, I don't think. Okay. Well, then that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If they're going to have them back-to-back, -back, why not just do them back-to-back -back in the same city? I, I have to assume there's a logistics reason why they did it. I'm sure. But it's just, I don't know, something I was thinking about the other day, because it was like, man, no wrestling news. Oh, oh yeah, because... Before we get into SmackDown, I want to bring up something. I haven't, I haven't done any fact-checking on this. Okay, but go ahead, I, Trump. 
It was. <laughs> so this might be fake news. I don't know. Okay. But I heard it on the radio, so it must be true. Um, <laughs> I heard that the WWE has all of their footage, like, I guess, like forever, like all, like their video archives is hidden somewhere in a, in a bunker that would s survive a nuclear blast. Okay, Trump. <laughs> Uh, they, I, it was on. Uh, it's wonderful. It's terrific. It's terrific. <laughs> um, Most wonderful bunker ever made. <laughs> um, I mean, it was on. It was on the radio show I listened to. It was talk radio. It was on their Today I Learned section, which they get off of Reddit. So, I don't know how true it is, but it wouldn't shock me. Yeah. So if there is a nuclear explosion, we still have our wrestling. We just got to go find that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Vince will find a way to put it out. Yeah. Because i got a feeling he's like a cockroach. Like, he's, it's going to take a lot to put him down. Okay, let's not, <laughs> let's hope Vince McMahon never hears you call him a cockroach. <laughs> uh, Fuck. That is, now well, this podcast is never going anywhere. But it's, it's in the good way, in the best way possible. <laughs> like, he, he'd survive anything. Keep digging the hole. <laughs> Thanks for making me fall in this hole with you. <laughs> Christ. Thanking everyone with me. Vince McMahon is a cockroach. Oh, I didn't... What? JBL opened up SmackDown by once again saying that these are non-traditional fans in the audience. And that they may cheer people they normally boo. Cole, Saxton, and Graves gave the same statement last night on Raw. I have to go back and listen to that. Yeah, I don't remember that. Someone said, uh... I love how WWE tries to explain the post WrestleMania crowd as if it's the upside down Stranger Things. Yeah. From Stranger Things. Oh, you haven't gotten that far in Stranger no. Things. Yeah. Um. What is? Oh, spoilers. What's the upside down? Uh, it's just kind of like uh like a Bizarro world. Okay. Like everything is dark. Everything's kind of different. And kind of kind of dead. Almost. But like same. Same place, but different. Like okay. a different plane from like D and D. Gotcha. Okay. Because Stranger Things is kind of based off the yeah off of the D and D game, so it's it's like another plane. So they were from Br where, where uh, Bray Wyatt's from. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Very much so. Oh, Maybe he is from the Upside Down. Probably. Maybe he's a Demi Gordon. And he had that hair. Yeah. Makes <laughs> sense. Speaking of Bray Wyatt, SmackDown the next night. Uh, started off by Randy Orton coming to the ring and saying he wanted a rematch. Or no. Wyatt stated he wanted a rematch. Right. And they're going to have a House of Horrors match. What yeah. the hell is that? Um, I've heard of similar things from Raven. I think yeah, he did a okay. House of Horrors match in TNA. And it was just, I think it was, I'm probably way off, but I think it was him and Abyss and just like, it looked like a... I was going to say it looked like a soundstage from Universal Studios. That's why, because they filmed yeah. the day there. Huh, um, that makes up. a lot of sense. But, um... You were the Simpsons there? <laughs> I mean, were the Simpsons there? Um, the no. Oh, no. no, that's a treehouse of horrors. Sorry. But there's a Simpsons ride at Universal. Which is my favorite ride at Universal. Um, but yeah, it was just... It. Oh, it's the best. Um, but yeah, they were just dimly lit, like, boiler room style from the Attitude Era. Yeah. With, like, fencing and stuff, and stuff hanging off the fencing, like, weapons hanging off the That's fencing. what I bet it's going to be. I bet it's going to be in a hell, a hell in a Cell match with weapons hanging off of it. Probably. Which would be cool. Yeah, uh, like FIP and Crystal River used to do the Cage of Pain, which okay. was a steel cage with weapons tied and hanging from the, the cage. Those were intense. I so, bet. Whew, I have somewhere, I still have my ticket, and I was in the front row, and I have a piece of glass and a thumbtack taped to it that were at my feet ah. by the end of the match. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh... Bray Wyatt showed up after this because I think Bray was on the screen or something. Showed up behind Randy. Randy got the upper hand 
and Eric Rowan came back. Yes. This is a game changer. In that crazy mask. Yeah, a creepy... Uh, uh, it's the sheet mask, but like a sheet and a gas mask. Steampunk almost. Yeah. That's awesome. I like Eric Rowan a lot. Yeah. He's a I, great worker. He's really entertaining. He's just... He's all around. He's really good. I'm really happy he's back. Yeah, I, I liked when they would refer to him as the big as Big Red Rowan. Like I was hoping that would have been like a whole nother. Oh, that was his Viking gimmick. Okay, so it was another character he had a I don't even call him Big Red Rowan since. Yeah, it was after the Wyatt family. Was JBL it? called him Big Red Rowan. JBL's a fucking moron. Well I know. We're gonna talk about that <laughs> later. He's funny though. But apparently he can't text his two step. Really? Well, because that's how he always falls. I've seen I've seen so many videos. I've been falling on the way to the on the way to the ring. So uh, afterwards, Miz and Maurice were interviewed backstage. Uh, apparently, they were talking about how Cena and uh, Nikki are done. Oh, that's so. right. Uh, then we had a SmackDown Women's match between Naomi and Alexa Bliss. And Naomi locked her in. I saw. I forgot to look this up, but she locked her in like some kind of crazy submission. That's how she won at WrestleMania. That's the same move. Oh, is it okay? Yep. That's People were like freaking out about it. That's why I wasn't so angry with Alexa losing again. Right. Because if she's gonna lose, it needs to be. I'm okay with it being that same move every time. It's just that's that's one thing that Alexa can never yeah. get past. Well, maybe now Alexa will get a submission finisher. Maybe. And they'll have a submission match. Oh, that could be cool. I like that. That's something I'm sure we've never seen in a women's match before. I want to say Charlotte had a submission match with Sasha. Did they? Pretty sure. All right, well, forget what I just said. <laughs> I could be wrong, though. I just, I'm pretty sure that happened. But it doesn't matter. It's still It awesome. would be cool, yeah. Yes. It would be even better if Alexa wins. Yes, of course. Absolutely. Uh, Kurt Hawkins came out to the ring and did the same thing the uh, the New Day did. They yeah, open isn't, challenge. Isn't that what he usually does, though? I think he comes out, talks shit, and somebody beats him up. Oh, yeah. And uh, who came out? So the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger. That was pretty exciting. That was so awesome. So he showed up at the Rumble at number 10, and everyone was upset they didn't do a thing with him. Yeah. I think that's fine. Because they yeah. gave him an awesome spot at the Rumble. They were like, all right, go back to NXT till we're ready. Right. That's okay, because people know who he is now. Mm -hmm. And he is at the number 10 spot. That's fucking perfect. Yeah. And now he came out. Uh, he beat the hell out of Kurt Hawkins. I'm pretty sure he beat him with the tiebreaker. Yeah. Which is like just an awesome... Would you call that a neck breaker or a head breaker? Just snapping their fucking head across uh, his knee. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because it's, it's a it's Death cool. Valley kind of driver, yeah. but he flips him over and just drops her head on his knee as he as he knees down. Yeah. that It's a nasty of, looking move. It's one of my favorite moves, actually. I love the I love the moves like that. But, uh, yeah, it's a tiebreaker. It's... Uh, Mojo Rally was interviewed. He won the Andre the Giant out. More about a royal. It's just the beginning for him. Miz and Maurice came dressed out, <laughs> dressed up as Cena and Nikki Bella. <laughs> um, they were talking about how Miz, how oh, Miz started a no more Cena chant, and then all of a sudden, well, as they were leaving, oh, they're, they're about to leave. They're about and, to leave. Uh, what's her name? I don't even remember. Maurice. Maurice. Yeah. Uh, I think they were both kind of doing like a robot thing where they were just making fun of how. Yeah. It was just I was not entertained. It was fine. It's it's the, the, the period on their feud. Yeah. They're done. Should be an exclamation point, but I guess it's going to fall off the period. I think it was more of a question mark. Yeah. Cause like, me. what? <laughs> All right. And then, yeah, uh, a mu some music hit, and I personally got pissed off. This was the reason I watched SmackDown, because I saw this happen. Right. And I was like, oh, he's going to come out and feud with them. I was Dude, I want to see Nakamura versus The Miz. So, obviously, it was Nakamura's song. Oh, and yeah. His, his violinist came out, which was the same guy from yeah. TakeOver, which is pretty cool. Um, did, did the beginning. Yeah. And it was 
cool as hell. Like, the live violin for his music is great. I so, doubt it's going to happen every time. No, I mean, because it's his debut. They'll probably do it on, like, pay-per-views and stuff. Maybe, maybe. yeah. But for his debut, that was great. Uh, he had an amazing entrance. He gets in the ring, and Miz and Maurice are, are gone? Yeah, they disappeared. Yeah, just gone. Which I was like, okay, so he's not going to fight them. Great. I was like, all right. So he, and he's standing in the ring and just goes through the whole thing, you know. Oh, and yeah. and he does his whole entrance, which that takes a long time, actually. And then it's Baron Corbin versus Dean Ambrose. That's how that happened. We went to commercial break, came back, and it was... Uh, well, yeah, Nakamura stood in the ring. The, the Nakamura chant for, like, 30 seconds. His music hits, and he leaves. No, yeah. I don't think we saw him leave. Well, I know his music hit again, but that was, and that was it for him. Yeah, it went to commercial break, and then all of a sudden... Yeah, I think it was... Nakamura posed in the ring, and smacked it, I went to commercial break. Oh, okay, so he didn't leave, but we heard his music hit again, and... That was it. <laughs> yeah. Interesting debut. Yeah, and then Corbin beat Ambrose, which I'm super happy about. Yeah, uh, but not for the title. No, it was a better match than WrestleMania. Yeah. Which I hate when they do that. Yeah. They just let them have their incredible match at WrestleMania. Let Corbin have his Mania moment. Th this kind of pisses me off. I'm sure he will. I hope so. Maybe this just isn't it. Maybe he'll win the heavyweight title there in a year or two. Hell yeah. Maybe he takes on Brock. Maybe he gets in this shift up. And the shift shake up? up? Shake up. Whatever. What are we driving now? <laughs> shift up. Hey, maybe it'll happen at Fast Lane. Shift up. There you go. You're welcome, WWE creative. So Shane came out and was talking about the uh, Superstar Shake-Up and AJ Styles' music hits. I really like this, actually. Yeah, this was like, oh shit. AJ was messed up, too. Did you see that shiner he had? Ooh, oh, yeah. Jeez. And AJ I, even pointed it out. Yeah. I want to know what, what part of the match that happened. <laughs> hey, they probably don't even know. <clears throat> probably not. But yeah, but, it was. He got... <laughs> yeah, Shane talked about SmackDown being the land of opportunity. Shane talked about SmackDown being the land of opportunity. And AJ came out and said that he is the man who who's he's the face of SmackDown. He's right. face the that wrong. built the place. Right. Oh yeah, face the right? place. Right, he built the place? Yeah, that's what he said. And then uh, they shook hands. They're good now. Yeah. I, this is a face turn for AJ, I think. Yeah, could be. I, I I almost didn't like when he went to go hit Shane real quick. Yeah, that was, that was good. A little much, uh, I thought that was funny. Yeah. And they both kind of laughed it off and they laughed. And so it was all right. But, yeah, I was like, when they when they shook hands, I was like, okay, cool. This is this is good. Good for SmackDown. Yeah. But that only means AJ's going to Raw now. <laughs> I don't think so. No, probably. I think he's going to stay. Um... I think it'd be really dumb for them to put him on Raw. Yeah. He just seems like a SmackDown person. I, I mean, it's like back in the day when Cena and, and Undertaker and Eddie Brock were SmackDown guys. Right. Just leave him there. Yeah. Um, and then we had Randy Orton and Luke Harper versus Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan. It was a fine match. And then at some point, um, Bray got in some trouble. The lights went out. He was up on the, on the entrance ramp. And then Eric Rowan got the shit kicked out of him. So yeah. Like, why is Bray such a wuss? Yeah, I don't know. So it, it's kind of upsetting. It's like Bray Wyatt needs to be built as a as a skin. He needs to be built as the Undertaker or Kane or Jake the Snake. Like right. the scary guy who's gonna kill you. Yeah, not the scary guy who's going to run away from Not the boogeyman. Right. Even the boogeyman, I think, got a better build-up than Bray. Yeah, that was a lot of bees. But you weren't? Huh? No, no. bees, what you just said. The boogeyman got a better build-up than Bray. <laughs> <laughs> boogeyman got a better build-up than Bray. <laughs> yeah. I was so confused. I was like, bees? <laughs> he had worms. What the hell? Bees? Um, 
So yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, that was it for SmackDown. So I feel like Raw had a better show. Yeah. I mean, we got Nakamura and Ty Dillinger. That was cool, but yeah, all all around, Raw was the better show. Yeah. Which, oh man, maybe they did that on purpose. Maybe. Because SmackDown's been much better. Yeah, Raw is like their flagship show. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they did that shit on purpose. Huh. So, yeah, next week we're going to get the uh, Superstar Shake-Up. Which means we're going to get some people moving. Um, hopefully, I, I'll say what I want to see happen. I want to see the club reunited. Yes. And actually become a faction. Yes. I would love to see that. I would love to see the club versus the New Day. That would be interesting. Because I think that's the thing people want to see. Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen Gallows and Anderson versus the New Day. Uh, probably. I think so. Pretty, pretty sure. But aren't the New Day, they're like the only, like, three-man tag, right? Uh, I was going to say the Whites, but not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we need another three-man. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like to see the club reunited. I would like to see somebody like Corbin move and actually get in a good feud. Uh, man, I don't know. I would like to see some NXT guys get called up. Supposedly, Elias Sampson and uh, C Andrade Cien Almas are getting called up. I think are a couple of weird ones, but I don't hate. Yeah. No, I do hate Elias Sampson. He's the drifter guy, yep. right? I think he's legitimately boring. I don't hate him as a heel. I just think he's legitimately boring. Yeah, I've only seen him a couple times, and I'm not... You know, he's just like, I play a guitar. I'm depressing. Yeah. I'm okay in the ring. Didn't he just have a match? Oh, I wish we would watch NXT. I didn't. I know that. He, he was doing like, oh, well, Cassius beat him and in a loser leaves town match. Yeah, so he's obviously getting called up. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. That's an unfortunate point. Unfortunate, yeah. And then the other, who's the other guy? Andrade. Cien Almas. Is that guy, the guy uh, with the fedora? Yes. Who just lost Alistair Black. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he's, he's really good in the ring. Yeah, he's got he's a good really character. Good. I think he could he'd do good on the main roster if they do something with him. Yeah, and I've seen a little bit of his character like out of the ring. He was like, Picking on some little guy in the locker room. Oh, okay. I haven't seen that. Yeah, like in like the performance center, like he was walking by and like pushed someone into a locker or like something with the lockers and some little guy he was picking on. Huh. I don't know. I like him. I you know he loses a lot in NXT because he's putting these like, in mm, I hate using this term indie darling kind of guys over. Right. But that's kind of like back in the day when the Click would have uh, X Pac lose the guys that were coming in to see if they were any good. I feel like that's yeah. the same thing. Like, Andrade, see if this guy's good. Yeah. Um, I wonder who's going to take his place, then, as the the tester guy. I don't know. Maybe Aleister Black will just murder everyone. Yeah, I, do you know <laughs> if he was on this last NXT? No, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I think the only article I saw was spoilers for the next few weeks. I didn't want to read that. Yeah. Um, we'll have to watch that here later. Alistair Black came from the Indies, right? Yeah. He's actually an MMA fighter, too. Oh, okay. That's why he does all the... Oh, he's playing UFC 2 the other night, playing as uh, Conor McGregor. Yeah. And he does the spinning heel kick. Mm -hmm. The uh, What did he call it? The Black Mass. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I have to win the match with this. <laughs> and I, I, I lost. Oh, man. I literally kicked this guy, like... Heel kick, heel kick, heel kick. He's bleeding everywhere. So it's like Lesnar versus Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> um, did like jumping knee, jumping knee, hitting him every time, doing spinning back fists, everything. And then I go to do a jumping knee, and this is one of the things I love about this game, is he hit me in the air, mm -hmm. and Connor like fell over. Like, he nailed me on the ribs in the air, and he just reacted to it and just landed on the ground. That's cool. And then that guy jumped on top of me and just started pummeling me, and I lost. 
Because ah, I am really bad at the ground in those games. That's why I play guys like Conor McGregor that strike yeah. really good. Uh, that, that's just funny aside. Because I was like, Black Mass, I gotta use the win. <laughs> my finishing move. Because the fucking UFC is the same. That's why I'm bad at those games. So yeah, that's the shakeup. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think anything's gonna happen that people expect except maybe Elias Sampson. Because yeah. I think WWE is getting good about doing things people don't predict. That's good because it was very predictable. Yeah. And very boring. So we've got a little bit of drama to talk about here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say something I didn't think I, I was gonna say. I don't like JBL anymore. He's a fucking prick. Legitimately don't like him. Okay. Have you heard about what's been going on? Well. Do you want to talk about this on this episode, or do you want to do it on the next one? Since we already covered Raw and SmackDown on this one. Then we can go into another episode where we discuss rumors and other stuff. We're at 40 minutes. We want to call it there? Uh, yeah, this is the Raw and SmackDown episode. Yeah, okay, so tune in next week where we're going to talk about why JBL is such a fucking prick. Why I hate him. Yeah. And some of the weird rumors and stuff I've seen floating around WrestleMania. Nothing really. Apparently, something I haven't. Oh. Nothing that interesting. And there's a couple other things. I know you want to talk about. There's a few other things besides what I told you. But they're nothing really that interesting. But worth hearing. Yeah. Because you should listen to us. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So, this has been the Future Heels podcast. You can find us at futruevillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-F-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S dot com. You can find us on iTunes. Just look up Future Heels. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, at Best in the Realm. You can find Brian at... Um, Nerdy Brian on YouTube. And at Brian25 on Twitter. Um, and on Instagram as... Probably the same. Uh, I believe it's Brian25... You can see most of my YouTube stuff on our website. Yes. Uh, my section of the website. Yeah, come check out all the cool content creators we got on there. We've got a special announcement now. We've got two new partners. My fiance, Kimberly, is now making content as Random Grenades. I think she's going to be making mostly Overwatch content. Um, I just did a stream last night with our other new partner, Bearded Gaming Entertainment, a good friend of mine. Me and him are going to be making uh, Overwatch, Diablo, Hearthstone content. He's also going to be doing Ghost Recon Wildlands. And he just forced me into buying Elder Scrolls Online. Huh. Which is an MMO. Oh, yeah. So I doubt I'm going to fucking enjoy it, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try my damnedest. Oh, on Instagram, I am Brian1138. You and your numbers. But sometimes you just have to. I don't, because I'm best in the realm. Well, I gotta you. Uh, 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 let's stop.